Most people aren't downtown early in the morning to see this happen, and it could go unnoticed and undocumented, and people could say that there isn't a problem, but it's a, it's a monumental problem. I've, I've had people uh, who first were saying, well, you're catching butterflies out here when they see us with the nets, and now they come up to us with a bag and say, I caught this bird, can you take it from me? There's a bird, stop. Would you help me? And would you walk towards him from that direction so he's looking at you? Just go there. Don't go real fast, but kind of come towards him so he's watching you. You could just wiggle a little bit. Got him. <laughs> this is one of those northern flickers I was telling you about. It's a migratory woodpecker that has the spots. I'm sure that feather you saw before was one of those beautiful dotted feathers. It's a male. The males have a little mustache on them. Um, and uh, he's lost a lot of his tail feathers. I'm going to put him in the bag. I don't want to stress him out too much. While the injured bird is going to go to the uh, wildlife center at the end of the day, we'll, everyone will bring their birds together to take them. The uh, dead birds will be collected and they'll go to the field museum for collection. Your building has to be handicap accessible. You got to have a ramp. You can't say I don't want a ramp. You got to have a ramp. Uh, your building has to have a, a handicap accessible bathrooms. You can't say that's going to cost me more. But right now, with bird friendly design, people use the excuse it's going to cost more, or it's, I don't like the way it's going to look. And you'd never say that about making your building adaptable for a person with a disability. But apparently, you can say that and let hundreds of birds die. So we want to really change it so that. Uh, that it's, it's just not acceptable. If you could build differently and prevent hundreds or thousands of birds dying at your building, uh, that's, that's the way we want, the direction we want people to go. Oh yeah, I'm just, I'm just across the river. We'll come, I'll come back over and get them from you, okay? We'll, we'll see you soon, thank you. Bye-bye, bye-bye. What did you do to your net? It looks kind of warped. Is your oh, net bent? You broke it? Oh, it's a, it's I thought it was one broke. of those collapsible ones. Well, oh, it, it is. It's supposed, it, it's supposed to be. It wasn't supposed to be. You've turned it into a collapsible one. Yeah, yeah. Okie dokie. So we got a little brown creeper. Oh, what's a, th a thrush? Yeah. We haven't had thrushes yet. It's a hermit thrush. Yeah, you can tell by the, the tail feathers. Are yeah, they have, a, they have a brown body and then their tail is, is sort of a, 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 a yeah. yeah. Like a burnt sienna red, the yeah, reddish tail. Beautiful tan. song. Too. Oh, and they sing. Yeah, it's just a beautiful singing bird. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it looks really sad now. Oh, oh my God, really sad. <laughs> it broke in two places. That. Oh, it broke twice. Yes, I was gonna say. It's oh, it's it's, now. it's like a pile of freaking bones in there now. That thing is toast. Dramatic woodcock right That's kind of toast. What the hell happened to and it? And then at the at the joint there, it seems to be bending back and forth. Right where the joint yeah. is. Yeah. You have, that thing has been through the war. I know. That, that's a well-used net. But one of the concerns that's currently out there is that birds have timed showing up when 
let's say the highest amount of insects are emerging or the highest number of caterpillars are available because that's when they can eat those and feed their babies. But if climate changes and the caterpillars come four weeks earlier, the birds might show up four weeks too late. Like the peak of caterpillar season could be over because they're used to showing up here May 1st. And because our weather changed, the caterpillars were all here in April. And that could leave a lot of these birds unable to um, uh, survive because they, they're, they're working on the assumption or the prediction that insects or whatever their food sources is, is going to be available. Here we go. So there they're going, they're moving. This is, the, it tells you what hour it is, at what time, at two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. They've got radar that they can track birds moving uh, because birds have water in their body and just the same thing that you use to track a storm system. Actually, before they show you the weather at night, Tom Skilling has got to erase all the birds from the projection. Storm patterns seem to move from, from uh, west to east, but you'll also see patterns of moisture moving north or south, and anything going at that angle is, is not a storm. It's typically it, it, it's birds on the radar. We've only had buildings here for maybe 100 years and lights and, and that sort of thing, whereas these birds have traveled along Lake Michigan when it was dark. Below them, it was safe with all sorts of wetlands along the lakefront. And now we've constructed cities, right? What used to be a safe habitat for them. I think he's dead, but we're always very careful to. Uh... This is a, he, he is dead. It's a golden crown kinglet. There's another bird that's one of our top 10 birds that we find most often. These little guys fly all the way up to almost the Arctic Circle where they breed. They're, they're, he's heading really far north. It's a male. The, the females have just yellow. The male uh, golden crown kinglets have orange mixed with yellow. So this is a, this is a male. And um, fortunately, he, uh, he didn't make it. And the problem with glass is, is two part. It's reflections and it's transparency. So transparency is bad because they may, if there was a tree in there, they want to get to it. But there's a problem even if you pull blinds down so that you can't see through anymore. So that's why uh, just putting up curtains doesn't oh, solve the problem. Saying, yeah, yeah and, and it, it actually, in certain light angles, it intensifies how much reflection you're getting. So, so people sometimes just put, it, put something on the inside, they pull their drapes, but they haven't stopped uh, the problem on the outside, which is the reflections. You get, that's why they often say you have to treat the outside of the glass, you've got to put something out here. Yeah. So you have to put window film that has like either a subtle line pattern or a dot pattern in it. In the on, yeah, on, on top of the glass or in front of the glass. That way birds come toward it and they see there's something I can't push through, there's something in my way. To me, I feel like I could go right to that tree. That tree looks so inviting. Oh, look at this. Oh, someone found this bird and buried it. Do you see it? It must have been something that, yeah. It's one of the yellow-bellied sapsuckers. This is another migratory woodpecker that we get a lot of. Uh, it's a male, it has a red throat and a red head to it. They too fly down to the Southern United States and the Caribbean for the winter. As their, as their name implies, they're, uh, sap sucker, which means they drill holes in trees to get the sap to run out. And after that, they either eat the sap or the insects that come to the, to the, to the sap. They, they encounter buildings only spring and fall migration. In a, in a way, we have changed the habitat adversely uh, that, that a lot of wildlife used by building a city on this location. We don't often find gulls, crows, pigeons, things that live downtown that have hit windows because they've lived in a city environment, they've lived near buildings and they understand that there's these invisible walls, they've bumped into them, and they, they have an understanding that the migratory birds that are coming from a rainforest or from a northern forest in Canada have never experienced what it's like to, uh, to see a building, to see something that looks uh, like an open space, but yet it's a solid wall. We're hoping the city of Chicago will adopt an ordinance that was written uh, to ask that new buildings all follow bird safety guidelines. They've agreed to ask buildings to use bird safety design, but they haven't implemented the policy yet, and we're waiting for that, hopefully.